आई एम वैभव श्रीवास्तव फ्रॉम वैभव ई लर्निंग अकेडमी टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू कंटिन्यू दॉपिक इन अटोमिक स्ट्रक्चर दैट इज बोहस अटोमिक मॉडल ऑफ एटम दिस इज आर पार्ट नंबर टू इन दी बिफोर वीडियो इन द प्रीवियस वीडियो वी हैव लर्न अबाउट इन दी एंड वी हैव लर्न वॉट वॉज वेदर फोर्थ मॉडल ऑफ एटम वॉट वॉज हिज ड्रॉबैक्स वॉट वॉज द ड्रॉबैक्स ऑफ वेदर फोर्थ एटम वाई डिड वेदर फोर्थ एटम फेल्ड मॉडल फेल्ड it failed because of mainly two reasons first reason it could not explain the stability of the atom stability of the atom in the sense according to the classical laws of electrodynamics according to the classical law of mechanics every microscopic accelerated charged particle accelerated electron is accelerated because it is rotating it is revolving charged particle it has negative charge any microscopic or any accelerated charged particle revolving around another charged particle will lose some energy every time when the electron is revolving around the nucleus it must do, uh, lose some energy and after losing that energy slowly slowly it should rotate 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 and then fall into the nucleus the atom should collide but actually this is an atom this this is made up of atom but this is still intact it means it is not colliding it means this is stable how is it stable this he was not able to explain second he could not explain the spectra still this term you have heard so many times hydrogen spectrum this spectrum that spectrum we will learning about what is spectrum in another video but today bohar will actually explain what is the spectrum then he will at least at least say that what is a spectrum actually the main thing spectrum was said by so many other people but he will explain he will give the starting hint of what is a spectrum bohar's model of atom was a big change in the uh, like history of atom models of atom so Bohr's atom was, you can say, inspired, or you can say, he modified the Rutherford's model. He took Rutherford's model, he modified it a little bit, and he said it is his own atom, Bohr's atomic model. In nineteen thirty, in nineteen thirty, Niels Bohr gave his model of atom. What was Niels Bohr's model of atom? We'll be seeing that now. But before that, we have to see some of the postulates of his atom. What good things did his uh, like model of atom say? first postulate of all the postulates which he gave was the electrons revolve around the nucleus nucleus in fixed certain stable stationary state in a fixed a uh, certain stable path so he said that the electron revolve around the nucleus in fixed certain stable paths rutherford said that the electron revolve around the nucleus but he did not say where the electron revolves he said that the electron revolves in fixed certain stable paths he called them orbits or shells or stationary states stationary states what is the meaning of this so he said this is the nucleus this is something this is like something this is what he called as the orbits these are the orbits in which the electrons rotate he said k l m and n k is the first shell l is the second shell m is the third shell and is the fourth shell so here let me draw three shells so this is the nucleus this is the k shell this is l this is m continuing to m K L M N O P Q R S L. So K L and M shell. This is what Bohr's model was. The electron revolve. You can take electron over here. It revolve around the nucleus in fixed certain stable paths. These paths are fixed. Fixed in the sense their energy is fixed in fixed certain stable paths. In the path which have fixed energy. What is fixed? 
energy is fixed the energy is fixed every orbit has some of its energy like it has one energy like first orbit k has the energy of minus 13.6 electron volt second orbit has minus 3.4 electron volt fourth has minus 1.5 electron volt how did we get this value this we will be learning by the end of the video where we will find the total energy of the orbits so these are the like k and m shell they said it is fixed it means that the electrons will be in the either first shell or second shell or third shell they won't be in between any of the two shells this was the first point this explained about the like uh, the this was actually basic everyone almost everyone knew it that the nucleus is in the center the electron is revolving he is a new thing it is fixed this was the first postulate you can say this as a postulate first postulate second postulate was the quantization or before the quantization you can say one more point he said that the electron while the electron while revolving does not emit or absorb energy this was the mistake of rutherford he said that the electron revolve around the nucleus but the classical laws of electrodynamics said that this is not possible because they will keep on losing energy and then they will slowly collide with the nucleus then what he said was the electron by revolving does not emit or absorb energy basically he said that you cannot use the classical laws of electrodynamics in the atomic like when you are studying about atoms the electron by revolving does not emit or absorb energy this point when people asked him about the explanation of this point he could not explain why it was like a you can say uh, he just gave up uh, like uh, just a line he said that that is true only he said that okay this is the statement which he is giving the electron by revolving does not emit or absorb energy this is true you know you can't ask why it is true but you can say it is true only this was his second postulate which he gave now the third postulate was the third postulate was the quantization model quantization let me write it that the electron revolve only in those orbits orbits whose angular momentum whose angular momentum which is denoted by l is in the integral multiple of h by 2 pi h by 2 pi what is this meaning the electron revolve only in those orbits whose angular momentum is in the integral multiple of h by 2 pi it means that this is the nucleus and again this is the first shell k n so electron can be in this shell or in this shell this has the angular momentum of h by 2 pi this will have the angular momentum 2 h by 2 pi electron won't be present in between of any of these two shells so the electron can be h by 2 pi it can be 2 h by 2 pi it can be 3 h by 2 pi etc up to n h by 2 pi okay it can be 1 h by 2 pi correct 2 h by 2 pi 3 h by 2 pi up to n h by 2 pi and if you take 0.5 h by 2 pi you can 1.7 h by 2 pi no 3 by 2 into h by 2 pi no because 3 by 2 is like 2 ones are 2 1.5 no you can't take these values also so only this so like this and that the angular momentum is in the integral multiple of h by 2 pi so this you can say that l is equals to h by 2 pi l 
is equal to h by 2 pi. Now, let us discuss about this term angular momentum. This angular momentum is actually L bar which is equal to R bar cross P bar. Angular momentum is the moment of momentum. Is the angular momentum. This is a vector quantity. We have learnt about this in the vector video. L bar is equal to R bar into P bar. Sorry, R bar cross P bar. So this is cross product and the value of cross product L bar is equal to R bar P bar sin theta. The magnitude, so we can remove this R P sin theta which you can say L bar is equal to R P. What is P? P means the uh, momentum. Momentum is equal to mass into velocity, so mv sin theta. Now what is sin theta over here? So, L is equal to R into P. This is the radius of the atom from like a radius from the nucleus to the first shell. Nucleus to first shell, this radius is called the radius of the atom or for the shell. This is the nucleus and this is the first shell. Let us say the electron is here and it is rotating with velocity v in this direction. The radius of the atom will be like this only, right? This is the radius, this is the velocity. The angle made is 90 degree. Okay. After rotating from after revolving from here, it came to here. Now the velocity is downwards. Still the radius is like this only. So the angle made is 90 degree. Okay. Electron came over here. This time it is going in this direction. Radius is like this. This is 90 degree. Electron is over here. It is going in this direction. The radius is like. It is going in this direction. Radius is like this. This is also 90 degree. So everywhere the degree you are getting is 90 degree. So you can say L bar is equal to R M V sin 90 degree which is equal to L bar is equal to R M V. Sin 90 degree is value is 1. R M V or mostly people prefer to write M V R. So angular momentum L bar is equal to M V R. Here L is equal to H by 2 pi and angular momentum is equal to M V R. So we can say that M V R is equal to N H by 2 pi. Why it is N H? Because it can be 1 H by 2 pi, 2 H by 2 pi, 3 H by 2 pi. So this is the first formula. M V R is equal to N H by 2 pi. And this is the one of the postulate of Bose atom, atomic model. So let us write this over here that M V R is equal to N H by 2 pi. This is our equation number 1. This will be over here till the end of the video. So, this was the third point. This was the third point which was given by Bohr and uh, MVR is equal to n h by 2 pi. This is angular momentum. The movement of the momentum is called angular momentum. So, the electron revolve only in those orbits whose angular momentum is an integral multiple of h by 2 pi. Here, h is actually Planck's constant. How did this Planck's constant come? This H is actually Planck's constant uh, discovered by a uh, scientist Planck, Max Planck. So his formula was E is equal to H C by lambda. Okay. And C by lambda is frequency nu. So H nu. E is equal to H nu. That is how it derived H C by lambda H. We will discuss this in the later video or we will discuss in the next video. Here we will write M V R is equal to N H by 2 pi equation number 1. This was something else which he gave. Now, second thing, why does the electron revolve around the nucleus? This was also you can see one more kind of a postulate. So, why does the electron revolve around the nucleus? So, you understood what is quantization principle? That it will be only in fixed. See, what is quantization? Quantization means fixed amount of anything. For example, you are going to a shop to buy pencil. 
you will ask the shopkeeper one pencil two pencil three or four pencil but you can't ask half pencil or 1.5 pencil you can't ask this amount of pencil so the amount of pencil is quantized the number of pencil which you are going to buy is constant you can't like constant is said is in a multiple of something but you can't take 1.5 or 0.5 etc that was quantization now this is again a neutron sorry a uh, nucleus this is the uh, first cation here is the electron now how is the electron revolving because boha said that electron neither gains nor loses energy while it is revolving so how from where does it get the energy to revolve because if something is moving it is moving it is accelerating you need at least some amount of force acceleration f is equals to m a a is equals to f by m you need a little bit force to move from where is this getting its force when an object is rotating it needs one force which is called centripetal force so this both have electrostatic force of attraction this nucleus is positively charged this electron is negatively charged they both attract each other by using electrostatic force of attraction which is fe this force of attraction it is being converted into fc which is a centripetal force which is allowing it to rotate that fc is allowing the electron to rotate around the a uh, nucleus similar example you can take uh, in like if you tie a stone to a string and if you try to rotate it here uh, like you are using a muscular force or you can say tension force the tension in the string is being turned into centripetal force if you take earth example the earth is rotating around the sun the sun is pulling the earth due to the gravitational force and that gravitational force is turning into centripetal force which is allowing the earth to rotate this was one thing so you can say that the centripetal force is equal to the force of electrostatic centripetal force is equal to electrostatic force of attraction so centripetal force has one formula centripetal force formula is equal to m v square by r it is equals to force of electrostatic formula is 1 by 4 pi epsilon not into Q one, Q two by R square. This is the force of electrostatic attraction formula. Q one, Q two is the charge of first particle. Q two is the charge on second particle. Q one, you can take electron because the electron is rotating. And here one important point is, you should not take that. You should not take the charge with side. You can take it without side. So we are taking Q one as electron. Electron has a charge of E. it has minus e but we are taking only the like without sign we are taking so m v square by r is equals to 1 by 4 pi epsilon not into q1 q2 so e into z e by r square what is z e z e is the charge on pro uh, nucleus no proton nucleus A e is the charge on the electron and p is the charge on i mean z is the charge on nucleus so mv square by r is equals to 1 by 4 pi epsilon not into e into z e by r square you can take z e square also this is the equation number 2 so mv square by r is equals to 1 by 4 pi epsilon not into z e square by r square equation number 2 yes that is the equation number 1 this is the equation number 2 these all equations was given by niels bohr okay? so we are uh, now we have to calculate some thing some like some values for the electron so before that he also explained one more thing that atom is in two like electron can be in two states like this is the again nucleus k shell m shell so for example the electron is over here now this electron neither gains energy nor loses energy while revolving but if we provide some energy to the electron 
it will absorb that en energy and it will jump from this to this it will jump from the lower orbit level to the higher shell lower stationary state to the higher stationary shape on um, stationary shape this state is called as excited state when an electron is simply roaming like it is simply revolving around the uh, nucleus in its original state then it is called as ground state ground state but when you provide energy to the electron it excites it means that it jumps from one energy level to the another energy level it jumps from lower to higher this state is called excited state excited state. these two terms were introduced by niels bohr and it was explained by niels bohr he described what is ground state what is excited state see basically every object in this universe reminds or tries to be in its lower energy state lower energy state if the energy is less stability is more stability means how much is an object like stable it is not moving here or there it is stable if you have low energy you won't run here and there too much so that is why every object in the world tries to remain more stable that is it tries to remain in less energy state when you give some energy to this electron it jumps to the next orbit because it has too much energy that is called excited state but this electron wants to come back to its original place it wants to lose its energy because it wants to become more stable so it will jump back from this excited state to ground state this jumping back is called de excitation de excitation it means that when an atom is coming from excited state to its original ground state it is called de excitation state and when an atom is going from a excited state to ground state it radiates some energy that energy is in the form of some wavelengths which again you pass through the prism which gives you some spectra that is atomic spectra this was explained by niels bohr so he explained actually what is atomic spectra we will be discussing what of atomic spectra in another video because for that so many scientists were involved lyman balmer passion they made some series etc which will be learning in the next video so this is what the nucleus the electron in the ground state is where it is rotating normally when you provide energy it comes to excited state and then it goes back to its normal position this is called de excitation these are the postulates which niels bohr gave now let us do some calculations calculations will be finding the radius of atom radius of atom in the sense that electron is like see this this is the nucleus this is the first shell cation the distance between this and this shell is called the radius we will be finding that for every different energy of electron is equal to the energy of orbital that is you remember that that will be learning in the future like a uh, in total energy of the electron up uh, coming in the video first we have to find radius of the atom radius of the atom so for this this is the equation number 1 this is the equation number 2 take equation number 1 square it and divide by equation number 2 This is one step which you have to follow for finding the radius of the atom. Equation number one whole square. So take m v r is equals to n h by two pi. Whole square over here, whole square over here, or you can take totally whole square. So here you will get m square v square r square is equals to n square. H square by two square is four pi square. Okay. First equation whole square. This we got. Now this equation we have to divide it from equation number two. So m square v square r square is equals to n square h square n square h square by four. pi square divided by equation number 2 mv square by r is equals to 1 by 4 pi
पाई एप्सिल नॉट इन टू जेड ई स्क्वायर बाई आर स्क्वायर दिस इज द इक्वेशन नंबर टू दिस इज द फर्स्ट इक्वेशन विच वी डिवाइडेड फ्रॉम दी सेकेंड इक्वेशन आई थिंक मेरे दिस मोर डाउन एम स्क्वायर वी स्क्वायर आर स्क्वायर इज इक्वल टू एन स्क्वायर एच स्क्वायर बाई फोर बाई ओके दिस इज द इक्वेशन विच यू गेट ओवर हिट नाउ वी हैव टू कैंसिल द टर्म्स विच लाइक वी कैन कैंसिल लाइक फ्रॉम हियर वन एम एंड दिस एम कैन बी कैंसिल बिकॉज इट इज स्क्वायर एम इन टू एम एम इज कैंसिल वी स्क्वायर एंड वी स्क्वायर इज कैंसिल दिस आर एंड दिस आर स्क्वायर दिस आर वी गेट कैंसिल ओके then anything else which can be cancelled yes 4 and 4 will get cancelled 1 pi and 1 pi will get cancelled these all are other terms which can be cancelled now after cancelling everything here 1 m is remaining so m v square is cancelled out r square is equals to n square h square uh, n square h square by pi Now this denominator value we can take it up to the numerator. So this side it is cancelled. Everything is cancelled out. Here one by epsilon naught. So epsilon naught is remaining. This we can take to the numerator into epsilon naught by this r is also remaining. Right? Epsilon naught into r into r by z e square will go to the denominator. Z e square. This is nothing. This is just common multiplication only. What we are doing? One by one by two. It is equals to one into two. One by two will go reciprocal. Same thing. We just reciprocal did the denominator went to the numerator side. So here m v square. So we can say m v square is equals to n square h square epsilon naught r by pi z e square. Here. V uh, this m r square not v square m r square r square and r so this r and this square will get cancelled so we need only radius of the atom so this m will go to the denominator because it is in multiplication if it goes to the uh, right hand side it will go as denominator so r is equals to this is the final formula r is equals to n square h square epsilon naught by pi m z e square this is the formula for radius n square h square epsilon naught by pi m z e square what is h over here h is the planck's constant what is epsilon naught even over here this is called the permittivity pi is pi m is the mass of the electron e is the charge of the electron so here we got the radius formula r is equals to n square h square r is equals to n square h square epsilon naught by pi m z e square this is the formula for the radius of an atom now here r is equals to in this equation most of the constant like you can't always remember this formula most of the equation like most of the terms in this are constant which are constant first we should find that h square is constant h is the planck's constant with planck's constant value h is equals to 6.62 into 10 to the power minus 34 joule this is the planck's constant value h square is a constant that's why you can take it outside permittivity uh, epsilon naught is also a constant pi is a constant m is a constant e square is a constant how are they constants see what is n n is the orbit the orbit number 1 2 3 or 4 that can be variable right it can be first orbit it can be second orbit third orbit h square h is a constant epsilon naught is a constant pi is a constant m mass of electron mass of electron is constant only uh mass of electron is constant yeah z what is z z is the atomic number atomic number is z z can be variable also it can be like for one hydrogen or helium lithium anything e is the charge on the electron and charge on electron is also constant so h square epsilon naught by pi mz e square into remaining is n square by here z so on substituting all these values r is equals to 0.5 
एन स्क्वायर हेच स्क्वायर एप्सिन नॉट बाई फोर नो नो बाई पाई एम जेड ई स्क्वायर करेक्ट पाई एम जेड ई स्क्वायर इज इक्वल टू एन हेच बाई टू पाई नाउ वी कैन कैंसिल द टर्म्स विच आर वे कैंसिल टू मास मास एन एन गेट कैंसिल वन हेच एंड वन सॉरी वन एन एंड वन एन गेट कैंसिल वन हेच एंड वन हेच गेट कैंसिल पाई एंड पाई गेट कैंसिल सो वी गेट वी इन टू एन हेच एप्सिन नॉट बाय जेड ई स्क्वायर इज इक्वल्स टू वन बाय टू वी इन टू वी कैन डू क्रॉस मल्टीप्लीकेशन टू एन हेच एप्सिन नॉट बाय सॉरी नॉट बाय क्रॉस मल्टीप्लीकेशन सो वन साइड विल बी दिस साइड अनदर साइड विल बी जेड ई स्क्वायर दिस इज वॉट we got one term velocity is equals to we need to find only velocity so this is multiplication which goes that side as division z e square by 2 n h epsilon not okay let us check once again mvr is equals to n h by 2 pi mvr is equals to n h by 2 pi एम वी आर वैल्यू इज एन स्क्वायर हेच स्क्वायर एप्सिल नॉट बाई पाई एम जेड ई स्क्वायर इज इक्वल टू एन एच बाई टू पाई एन एंड एन गेट्स कैंसिल हेच एंड हेच गेट कैंसिल एम एंड एन गेट्स कैंसिल पाई एंड पाई गेट्स कैंसिल वी इन टू एन हेच एप्सिल नॉट बाई जेड ई स्क्वायर इज इक्वल टू वन दिस वैल्यू रिमेनिंग वन वन बाई टू क्रॉस मल्टीप्लीकेशन वी इन टू टू एन एच एप्सिल नॉट इज इक्वल टू जेड ई स्क्वायर वी इज इक्वल टू जेड ई स्क्वायर बाई टू एन हेच एप्सिल नॉट this is the formula for velocity velocity of element sorry velocity of electron in nth shell vn is equals to z e square by 2 n h epsilon not v is equals to z e square by 2 n h epsilon not this is the formula for velocity of so z e square by 2 h n absolute not visible this is the formula for velocity now here also many constants are there like not many like uh, somewhat but constants are at least there here the constants are velocity is equals to z it can be variable it can be hydrogen helium just as the before example e square is the charge of electron that will be constant so e square by n n will be variable 2h plus constant is uh, constant epsilon not permittivity is constant into z by n correct e square by 2h epsilon not into z by n so velocity is equal to after substituting all the values of constant 2.18 into 10 to the power of 6 Into z by n into z by n meter per second. This is the formula of velocity of an electron in nth shell. 2.18 into 10 to the power 6 z by n meter per second. Or you can say velocity is equal to 2.18 into 10 to the power of 8 z by n centimeter per second. It revolves with this much speed. So. What is c? C is equal to three into ten to the power of eight meters. Speed of light in vacuum or speed of light in air is called as c. This is the speed of light in air, and this is the speed of electron in the atom. So you can see ten to the power six, ten to the power of eight. This value is approximate equal, like almost equal, even a uh, hundred difference is of hundred uh, meter per second. But still, it is almost equal to the speed of light. So you can say one by one thirty. So it will be one by one hundred meter per second. So meter per second into ten to the power of eight meter per second. One by one thirty seven or one by one hundred. The ratio of electron in atom by the ratio of speed of light. So here we can write v is equals to two point one eight into ten to the power of six into z by n meter per second. Values are important. So this is how we derive the velocity of an electron. This is how, like, what we did was we took the first equation, we substituted the radius value, and then we found that v is equal to this. 
and then we substituted the constants and then we found velocity is equal to 2.18 into 10 to the power 6. Now, what are the models of questions that can come with this like uh, velocity of electron? So, the questions that can come is find the velocity of like um, sec, uh, not second elastic, third orbit of Li plus plus atom. Li is lithium, lithium atomic number, hydrogen, helium, lithium third plus plus it has two electrons and you remove two electrons. So, you will get only one electron over here. Find the velocity of third orbit. N is equal to 3. Z is equal to 3. Okay. Velocity V is equal to 2.18 into 10 to the power of 6 into Z by N. Z is 3 by N is 3. 3, 3 gets cancelled. So, velocity is equal to 2.18 into 10 to the power 6 meter per second. This is the velocity of third orbit of lithium atom. Electron, find the velocity of, sorry, electron in third orbit of lithium plus uh, atom. So, you can also take, find the velocity of third, instead of third you take uh, fourth or fourth orbit of He plus atom. For example, this is your question. Then, then, Z is equals to 2 hydrogen helium and uh, N is equals to 4. So, velocity is equals to 2.18 into 10 to the power of 6 Z by N. 2 by 4. 2 ones are 2 twos are. So, 2.18 into 10 to the power 6 by 2 meter per second. This will be the velocity of electron in the fourth orbit of helium plus atom does not exist but still like hypothetically if you calculate it then also you will get this will be the because helium has just two electrons which is in the first shell itself fourth shell how is it possible but still hypothetically this will be the uh, velocity of electron if it is in the fourth shell this is the velocity of electron now comes calculating the energies of electron we will have kinetic energy potential energy and total energy of electron kinetic energy of electron. What is kinetic energy of electron? Kinetic energy means that the energy of any object or particle due to its motion is called kinetic energy. If even you or me, if we are walking, still we also possess some kinetic energy. Potential energy is up to some height. That will be next. So, kinetic energy is the energy of any object while it's motion. Electron is in motion. So, kinetic energy Ke is equals to half mv square. Ke is equals to half m into Velocity formula we just found z e square by 2 h uh, epsilon naught. So this one whole square. So z e square by 2 h n epsilon naught whole square. Correct? Z e square by 2 h n epsilon naught whole square. So kinetic energy is equals to 1 by 2 into m into z square e power 4 by 2 square actually 2 square 2 square is actually 4 4 h square n square epsilon naught whole square kinetic energy is equals to 1 by 2 into m z z square e power 4 e squares whole square e power 4 by 4 because 2 square is 4 4 into h square n square epsilon naught whole square so kinetic energy is equals to m z square e power 4 by 2 fours are 8 8 h square n square epsilon naught whole square this is the formula for kinetic energy
एम जेड स्क्वायर ई पावर फोर बाई टू फोर जा एट एच स्क्वायर एन स्क्वायर एफ सी एन नॉट टू स्क्वायर काइनेटिक एनर्जी इट इज नॉट माइनस इज इक्वल टू एम जेड स्क्वायर एफ सी एन नॉट ए ई सॉरी ई पावर फोर इनटू बाई एट एच स्क्वायर एन स्क्वायर एफ सी एन नॉट टू स्क्वायर दिस इज द काइनेटिक एनर्जी फॉर्मूला के ई इज इक्वल्स टू एम जेड स्क्वायर ई पावर फोर बाई एट एच स्क्वायर एन स्क्वायर एफ सी एन नॉट होल स्क्वायर दिस फॉर्मूला आई एम राइटिंग बिल्ड इट स्मॉल सो दैट बिकॉज देर आर सम मोर फॉर्मूलाज एंड एवरीथिंग नीड्स टू बी वर्क सो दिस इज द कैनेटिक एनर्जी ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन द एनर्जी ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन ड्यू टू इट्स मोशन इज कॉल्ड कैनेटिक एनर्जी एंड दिस इज हाउ वी डिराइव द कैनेटिक एनर्जी नेक्स्ट कम्स पोटेंशियल एनर्जी फॉर दिस आई एल एक्सप्लेन वॉट विल बी द क्वेश्चन लेटर बट सेकेंड वॉन्ट इज पोटेंशियल एनर्जी ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन पोटेंशियल एनर्जी ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन रिमेम्बर इन द स्टार्टिंग ऑफ द वीडियो आई सेट वी विल टेक विथ चार्ज फॉर पोटेंशियल एनर्जी सो पोटेंशियल एनर्जी is equals to mgh what is potential energy first of all the energy of an object because of its height because like uh, for its height at a particular height what energy is that that is potential energy of anything but in electron when we are talking about microscopic species potential energy is the charged electrostatic force of attraction between two particles charged particle so pe is equals to mgh this is the wrong formula we will not use this formula over here this we use in physics when we are dealing with big objects so pe is equals to 1 by 4 pi epsilon not into q1 q2 by r this is the potential energy formula here q1 q2 we will take with sign this is not this is n with the sign so q1 charge of the electron q2 charge of the nucleus the charge on the electron is minus e the charge on the nucleus is plus ze so potential energy pe is equals to 1 by 4 pi epsilon not 1 by 4 pi epsilon not into or you can say that dot minus e into Z E by R minus E because it is the charge on the electron which is negative charge. So potential energy is equals to one by four pi epsilon naught into minus E into Z E square minus Z E power two or E square minus Z E square by R is the radius. Substitute the value of radius. N square h square epsilon not by pi m z e square that by i am taking upside pi m z e square pi m z e square pi m z e square potential energy is equals to 1 by 4 pi epsilon not epsilon not into minus minus z so here pi and pi are actually cancelable so you can cancel pi Epsilon not into epsilon. Okay, uh, minus z into z minus z square m. So you will take minus m z square e square into e square e power four. Here also e square. Here also e square. Square into square is equal to power four. A power m plus a power n is equal to a power m plus n. So e power two plus two is equal to e power four. Minus why minus because it is minus charge. Just because of one minus everything will get minus minus. So minus of this value by n square h square epsilon not. So potential energy is equals to minus m z square e power four by. What did I write? Oh no, pi won't be here actually because pi is cancelled. Four epsilon not. Yeah. By four. n minus m z square e power four by four into n square h square epsilon naught. See this here m z square epsilon uh, sorry e power four by only four is that 
what will happen if we multiply this whole equation by 2? Nothing wrong because we are multiplying both numerator and denominator. So, after multiplying both values by 2, you will get P E is equals to minus 2 M Z square E power 4 by 4 to the 8 N square H square epsilon naught whole square. This is the formula for potential energy. P E is equals to minus 2 M Z square E power 4 by 8 n square h square epsilon naught whole square potential energy formula now this was the formula for potential energy and then we got the formula for kinetic energy now we will find the formula for total energy total energy is the sum of potential energy and kinetic energy of an electron or anything actually Total energy of electron in nth shell. Total energy of electron in nth shell. Total energy is equals to kinetic energy plus potential energy. Kinetic energy is m z square e to the power 4 by 8 h square n square epsilon naught whole square plus plus minus so plus into minus you can take minus better minus 2 m z square e to the power of 4 by 8 n square h square epsilon naught whole square now here we have the lcm as common see h square n square n square h square what is it? same thing only right multiplication only right? you can interchange the order so LCM is common, you can take 8 n square h square epsilon naught is the common LCM. So m z square e power 4, m z square e power 4. Just this is 2, this is 1. So let it take this as 1. 1 minus 2 is equals to minus 1. So you will get minus m z square e power 4. This is the formula for total energy. So total energy is equals to minus m z square e power 4. Total energy is equals to minus m z square e power 4 by 8 n square h square epsilon naught whole square. This is the total energy formula. So, one thing do you realize? Potential energy and kinetic energy are related to each other. How are they related? Mm. Potential energy is equals to minus 2 ke. Correct or not? If you take kinetic energy multiplied by minus 2, not both sides, only numerator, like minus 2 into k, so it will be minus 2 into mz square e power 4 by 8 h square n square epsilon naught 2, so you will get minus 2 mz square e power 4 by 8 h square n square epsilon naught whole square. This is the value of potential energy. So you can say that potential energy and kinetic energy are related by potential energy is equals to minus 2 ke. Let me write that down here. Potential energy is equals to minus 2 ke. This is the formula for potential energy. Now, total energy is equals to, here also many constants are there, right? Again, we came to the constant game. So here, what are the constants? Minus m e power 4 by 8 h square epsilon naught whole square whole square uh, epsilon naught whole square epsilon naught square sorry these are the constant values into z square by n square this is the value of total energy total energy is equals to if you calculate this value you will get minus 13.6 into z square by n square this value is in negative and this is correct because total energy of electron we are finding because total energy of electron we are finding electron has the charge of minus it means that there is a term called ionization energy ionization energy is the energy required by the electron to leave the nucleus if you provide certain amount of energy to the uh, electron it will leave the nucleus and it will come out that is it, it is a negative because it is like in depth if 
the electron is having some depth with the nucleus. If you give 13.6 joules, sorry, 13.6 electron volt of energy to the electron, then the electron will be free from the nucleus. This is the total energy formula. And kinetic energy, kinetic energy is equals to minus of total energy. You can take like that. Minus of minus is equals to plus. So kinetic energy is equals to 13.6 into z square by n square. This is the total energy formula. Let me write this over here. Total energy is equals to minus 13.6 into z square by n square. These all formulas was given by Niels Bohr in his calculations and these are the derivations of how did these values come. This is the total energy and regarding total energy there are some very important questions of total energy of electron. Now see, total energy is the energy of electron in nth shell. So you might have heard the term that energy of first orbit is minus 13.6, second orbit is minus 3.4. How did you get that? Let us check over here. So we are taking one constant that is hydrogen, constant atom, hydrogen. So find the radius of, find the radius of the, not radius, the, actually find the energy of the first orbit of hydrogen. So radius of, not radius, actually, energy of first orbit of hydrogen. We are taking constant as hydrogen only, okay. So energy is equals to minus 13.6 into z square will be 1 only by n square also 1. So minus 13.6 electron volt. This uh, unit is electron volt. Okay. Now first excitation state. What is first excitation state? This is the Cation electron, you are providing some energy. Electron is jumping from ground state to excitation state. When it is jumping from the uh, ground state to the nearest to the nearest orbit, it is called first excitation state. If you provide it more energy, it will jump to the next orbit. That is called second excitation state. So, when you are taking an electron of hydrogen in the first excitation state, then minus 13.6 into z square 1 only by this time from n is equals to 1 to n is equals to 2 that is why you will take here 2 square which is minus 13.6 into 1 by 4 136 by 40 2 table 2 6 za, 2 8 za, by 20s 32 by 10 3.2 so here you will get minus 3.2 electron volt weight, minus 13, 136 and 6 are 8 by 20, 32, 34 actually, yeah, 3.4 this will be, minus 3.4 electron volt. This is the uh, en energy of the electron in the second orbit, minus 3.4 electron volt. Then energy of electron in the second exact third excitation state no second only yeah second excitation state it means from first to third orbit k shell to L m shell that is called second excitation state minus will still be 1 by n square this time it is going from uh, k to m so it will be 3 square so minus 13.6 into 1 by 9 if you calculate this value will come minus 1.5 electron volt. Say if you are taking energy of the electron in the third excitation state, it will be minus 13.6 into 1 by 4 square which is 16, which is equal to minus 13.6 by 16 which you will get minus 0 0.85 electron volt. What is the value of these electron volts, electron volts? Take this as the nucleus first shell second shell, third shell or let me draw it again properly over here first shell, second shell, third shell ok the first shell is minus 13.6 electron volt second is minus 3.4 third is minus 1.5 so 
the meaning of this is that from the first shell to second shell like minus 13.6 is the value for the first orbit if you want the electron to go to the second orbit then you have to do this delta e is equals to e2 minus e1 here what is the e2 minus 3.4 minus minus of minus plus 13.6 it means that 10.2 electron volt if you provide 10.2 electron volt of energy to any electron which is in its ground state you are providing energy to the electron to the ground state then it will jump from first shell to second shell similarly if it is in 3.2 you want it to jump to the third shell then e2 minus e1 minus 1.5 minus of minus plus 3.4 so you will get 3.4 minus 1.5 Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Here, nine. One point nine. One point nine electron volt. If you provide one point nine electron volt of uh, energy to the electron which is in the second orbit, it will jump to the third orbit. Similarly, if you provided thirteen point six electron volt, direct thirteen point six, then the electron will go to infinity. it means that the electron will be released from the nucleus this is what known as the total energy of an electron so these are the calculations which were given by niels bohr in his bohr atomic uh, model and these calculations are really important now let us see finally the drawbacks of bohr's atom why did this atom also fail uh, not at a model why did this model also fail these are all the formulas which actually these are not required that just this value like uh, this formula is important this is important this one this one uh, and that last one that minus 13.6 that formula is very important for the examinations then comes drawbacks of bohr atomic model why did his model fail i mean you can't say fail but why did this his model uh, it wasn't reliable first thing this model was applicable only on hydrogen and hydrogen like species what is the meaning of this hydrogen hydrogen like species or you can say one electron species it means that for example you take hydrogen it has one electron it is valid on this second you can take helium it has two electron it is not valid on this but if you take helium plus it has one electron it is valid on this hydrogen helium lithium it has three electrons it is not valid li plus it has two electrons it is not valid li plus plus it has one electron it is valid so this much all hard work just for one single electronic species that is just limited two or three only you can use so this model failed just because it was able to explain only single electronic species uh, atom model second drawback was he could not explain spectra for multi electronic species this was his second drawback he could have he could only explain about the hydrogen the species like hydrogen spectra he was the one who uh, like explain what is the hydrogen spectra but he could not explain it for other which have more than uh, one electron which have two three electrons he could not explain for them third one which will be covering in the next video he violated de bruyne and heisenberg's principle 
these two people are very important. D. Broe, actually written as D. Broglie, but pronunciation is D. Broe. D. Broe and Heisenberg's principle. I'll explain the short in what is D. Broe's principle. We'll explain this in long way in the next video. D. Broe said that electron is wave and also a particle. But Niels Bohr never mentioned anywhere that electron is a wave. He only said that electron is a particle and this everything was given only at electron is a particle. So he violated these laws and these laws, this De Broglie's hypothesis and Heisenberg principle was proven. But he still did not obey this and thus his model failed. So this was today's video about Bohr's atomic model, one of the very important and some of the like one of the tough topics in chemistry. I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you have enjoyed it, do like this video, subscribe to this channel if you are new. See you next time in the next video. Thank you so much and goodbye.